Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unlimited, our AMA drone report debuts. The restoration of Memphis Bell is nearing completion. Miracle Flights helps more people in need. Hello, I'm Christopher C. Odom. It's January 24th, 2017, and this is Airborne Unlimited. Famed baseball pitcher Dizzy Dean once said, it ain't bragging if you could do it. Well, our first AMA drone report has debuted and we are proud of the results. We did it. The Academy of Model Aeronautics, better known as the AMA, has been around since 1936, which makes it one of aviation's oldest and longest running aviation membership organizations. Now, AMA and ANN have now joined forces to create regular video programming to bring you the latest news in recreational drone aviation, and it's called the AMA Drone Report. ANN's Jim Campbell spent time on the West Coast this month at the AMA Expo West meeting with incoming AMA President Rich Hansen, discussing the future of model aviation and the hobby drone community. This resulted in the final agreement to work together in the producing video programming dedicated to this new and exciting aviation hobby. Our first issue of the AMA ANN Drone Report is up and running and can be reached through the link on our website. Even if you're not actively involved in hobby drone flying, this activity is expanding so rapidly that we think everyone will enjoy this programming. We'll be featuring information about products, drone news and events, important news regarding the safe operation of recreational drones, and so much more. Our Aeroverse is expanding and we are expanding with it. Please join us. Here's a great story for those who like to remember our heroes of World War II. One of the most recognizable symbols of World War II will once again report for duty, exactly 75 years later after its crew finished their last mission in the war against Nazi Germany on May 17, 1943. The B-17F Memphis Bell will be placed on public display at the National Museum of the U.S. on May 17, 2018. This aircraft was the first U.S. Army Air Force's heavy bomber to complete 25 missions over Europe and return to the United States. After returning to the United States, its crew flew the aircraft across the country on a three-month war bond and morale boosting tour. The epic 25th mission flight has been featured in two movies, one made in 1944 and the other in 1990. Following decades of display in Memphis, the historic aircraft came to the museum in October 2005, where work began on a careful multi-year conservation and restoration effort, including corrosion treatment and the full outfitting of missing equipment. Now, the Memphis Bell will soon be the centerpiece of a new major exhibit in the museum's World War II gallery. After the break, Miracle Flights urges you to contact them if you need help. Explore No Limits Flying in the FAA Certified Sea Ray Amphibious LSA. One of the top three best-selling LSAs in the U.S., Progressive Aerodyne Sea Ray comes equipped with a Rotax engine and exhibits extraordinary handling on land, water, and in the air. Check it out at www.searay.com. Since the early days of powered flight, pilots have struggled with landing in crosswinds. In fact, crosswinds and wind gusts cause more landing accidents than fog, thunderstorms, and icing combined. That's where the Redbird X-Wind SE comes in. By placing pilots in gusty crosswind conditions for extended periods of time, the X-Wind SE gives instructors all the time they need to teach the pilot the proper techniques for landing in crosswind conditions. For more information on Redbird X-Wind SE and Redbird's entire line of flight training devices, visit www.redbirdflightsimulation.com. Com. Build and fly with the most exciting line of kit aircraft on the market, the Sonics Aircraft B models. The B models offer more room and comfort, more fuel, more panel space, more engine choices, and the same great Sonics Aircraft flight characteristics. Learn more at sonicsaircraft.com. Welcome back. If you have a story suggestion for Airborne Unlimited, Errol TV, our website, or podcast, just email to news-spy at errol-news.net. For over 30 years, Miracle Flights has been helping patients with rare and life-threatening medical conditions gain access to distant medical care by providing airline transportation. 
Now it's reported that Miracle Flight experienced an impressive increase in families served during December 2016. The nonprofit organization coordinated a record 710 Miracle Flights, which is almost 100 more trips than reported in December of 2015. Operating both domestically and internationally, patients were flown from the 35 states in five different countries, including Trinidad and Tobago and the United Kingdom. Highlights include 81 flights from California, 70 from Texas, and 65 from Colorado. To date, Miracle Flights reports they have coordinated 105,500 flights and covered over 59 million miles. Flights are provided at no cost to the family and can be arranged as many times as necessary. Marky e. Brown, the CEO of Miracle Flight, said if you or someone you know is in desperate need of out-of-state medical care, please don't hesitate to contact us. Every Tuesday, we look ahead at some of the more interesting events in the aviation universe. Here's this week's Aero Calendar. We'll start this week's Aero Calendar with a reminder. The U.S. Sport Aviation Expo begins tomorrow, January 25th, and runs through to January 28th. It all takes place in Sebring, Florida at the Sebring Airport, and it's bound to be interesting for all who enjoy recreational aviation. Sticking with a Florida event, January 26 marks the occasion of the 2017 NBAA West Palm Beach Regional Forum. It takes place at the Palm Beach International Airport and features corporate exhibits, static displays of aircraft and education sessions in a one-day event. The forum brings current and prospective business aircraft owners, operators, manufacturers, customers, and other industry personnel together. Now we head out west to Peoria, Arizona. This is where we find the Arizona Backcountry Fly-In being held at Pleasant Valley Airport on February 4th. It's a fun day of competitions and demonstrations. STOL, spot landing, flower bag drops, toilet roll cutting, and airplane drag racing. The day will start off at 9 a.m. with a bush and mountain flying seminar and a safety briefing. RV and tent camping facilities are on the airport. Out on the west coast, we find the American Aviation Historical Society annual meeting being held on February 4th in Huntington Beach, California at the Allen Airways Museum. It's located on the grass strip at the Gillespie Field. Lunch will be served and there will be tours of the San Diego Air and Space Museum. All are welcome. Fly or drive in. After these messages, Kennedy Space Center holds a day of remembrance. There's a difference between charting a steady course and pushing for the ceiling. And for nearly a century, Hartzell Propeller has been defining that difference. It's in our passion for engineering and research and our dedication to testing the limits of performance. We are built on honor. We are Hartzell Propeller. The Bristol Light Sport Aircraft is what you are looking for. The Bristol is wider than a Cirrus, faster than a Skyhawk, offers more storage than a Husky, and comes standard with Garmin Avionics. So what are you waiting for? Visit Bristel.com to find out how you can get into a Bristel today. With so much news coming out of the aviation industry, we're summarizing a few of those other great stories in a brief segment we call Around the Patch. NASA Kennedy Space Center will pay a special tribute to the crews of Apollo 1 and Space Shuttle's Challenger in Columbia, as well as other NASA colleagues. This takes place during the agency's Day of Remembrance on Thursday, January 26. The U.S. Navy and Lockheed Martin recently cut the ribbon on a newly renovated facility at the Cape Canaveral Air Force Station. The facility, which is known as the Engineering and Operations Building, was originally constructed in 1961 for NASA's Project Mercury. NASA uses computer modeling to visualize airflow around flying objects. Now, researchers recently used this technique to explore the aerodynamics of a modified DJI Phantom III quadcopter. Complex air motion was noted between the rotors and the airframe. 
SpaceX hopes to deliver a communications satellite into orbit next month using a Falcon 9 booster that has previously flown into space. The payload has arrived at Cape Canaveral and is reportedly being prepared for the launch from the Kennedy Space Center. Dragonplate, a company known for producing carbon fiber components, has released UAV quadcopter frame kits. These kits provide the basic structure necessary for anyone interested in building their own carbon fiber multi-roller vehicle. Full CAD models come with the kit. Well, that's it for today's trip around the patch. Now let's get back to the rest of the news. The 30th anniversary of the female human-powered flight is being celebrated by the Federación Aeronáutica Internacional. On January 21, 1987, American triathlete Lois McAllen set three women's world records for human-powered flight, and they still stand today. The Michelob Light Eagle was an experimental human-powered aircraft built as part of the Dautilus project. The ultimate aim of the Dautilus project was to fly a human-powered plane from Crete to the island of Santorini in the Mediterranean, recreating the mythical flight of the Dautilus and his less fortunate son, Icarus. McAllen had been in training for months to be up to cycling and flying a gossamer light plane into the air and fly it by leg power alone for the next 9.3 miles, an average speed of 12.5 miles per hour. The flight took place at Edwards Air Force Base in California. The course to be flown had three legs, and she completed the flight in 37 minutes, 38 seconds, maintaining an altitude of only a few yards above the ground. The records she said for female human-powered flight were distance around a closed circuit, straight distance, and duration. Well, that's our program for today. Remember that Airborne Unlimited is streamed daily, Monday through Friday, with additional breaking news bulletins for important stories that fall outside of our normal deadlines. If you're watching us on YouTube, please subscribe. Do check us out on Facebook and Twitter. Get comprehensive, real-time, 24-7 coverage of the latest in aviation and aerospace stories anytime at aerol-news.net. Keep flying. We'll see you tomorrow. Thank you.